Hello and welcome back to the Drive School. Today we are going to take a look at the field bus. The grid converter is usually controlled by a PLC system, which also is the power management system on board of the ship. There is some kind of field bus system, it could be any field bus system, it could be a TCP IP, Modbus, it could be Profibus, Profinet, it could be Ethercat many types of field buses. Basically they work um, on the signal level pretty much the same, it's just the speed and the format you transfer the information which are the difference. Also notice that the battery is um, a standalone unit which have its own battery management system. It means that uh, there is a computer controlling the battery, the cell balancing, the rack balancing, and also it controls the DC contactors. It's not only one contactor, this is usually many contactors, one for each rack. But it means that the battery management system can disconnect the battery if something is wrong with the battery. If you have uh, exceeded the limits for uh, state of charge, currents, temperature, whatever, safety functions can take it off. The drive itself get all its references and modus and um, control signals from the PMS. In the field bus setup, the PLC and the power management system is the master of the field bus. The drive is only a slave and also the battery management system is a slave to the power management. So the drive doesn't control anything else than its own internal uh, application and the total picture, the, the big picture is controlled by the PLC. Commands given from the PLC to the grid converter. Uh, if you look at all the possibilities that are in the control words and the auxiliary control words, there is a lot of things you can do uh, with a grid converter, but a minimum, this is about the minimum what it takes to control it, should be like start and stop signal and also reset the faults. You should tell it when to synchronize to uh, external grid. You also should have the possibility to start and stop the PID regulator for the voltage control. You also should have the possibility to write a uh, base current reference. So when you run in isosynchronous mode, the PLC will have like the power handle for the current going back and forth of the system. Also the modes, should it sit in drooping mode, isosynchronous mode, island mode, all these possibilities you have possibility to control via the field bus. Information from the grid converter to the PLC and power management is quite a lot and you can select what type of information you want to monitor. It could be the status of the grid converter, if it's in ready, run, faults, have sync to the grid, process values, that is 16-bit uh, integer values, it could be the current, total current, active current, reactive current, DC voltage, AC voltage, synchronization error. There is a lot of information you can select to transfer to the power management system. The information sent between the drive and the PLC is a set of words. You have a set of words that goes in this direction. The drive call this the outwards and the set of words going in this direction will be the in words. For the information sent from the drive to the PLC, status words, two of them, bitwise, each and every bit means something. It could be ready, run, fault, in sync, contactor statuses, in and output statuses. Process data, that is process values from the process. It could be DC voltage, temperatures, it could be currents, active current, reactive currents, all kind of information that you want and you can select it. You find in a manual the ID number for the kind of process data you want to look at. 
You put in the ID number for it and the value will be transferred to the PLC. In opposite direction, from the PLC to the drive, you have a set of words where the two first ones are control words. Bitwise, these words mean something. Start, stop, reset, go sync, close contactors, all kind of things. Process data words, that is basically references to the drive. It could be the base current reference, it could be modus uh, control, all kind of things that you want to control in the drive, whatever parameter you want to change. You find an ID number, put it into the parameter list for the field bus, and that will be the information sent here. Of course, the PLC must write into these correct boxes then, must write to the correct uh, bit pattern. It must put the values here in a 16-bit integer format. And then you have transferred from the PLC to the drive. All the process information that we see here is now transferred via the field bus. If we look in detail how the field bus for this setup looks like, this is the bitwise control of the drive. Here is the control word one. Here is the bits that are controlling the drive. Two of them. Here we can do the synchronization. Coming back from the drive is a 16 bit on the status word one and the status word two. If we look at the words, we write references to the drive and we also read some process values coming from the grid converter. Also, we have a function here which is quite interesting. And this is writing an ID number and then a value. Then we can put any value into any ID number. This means we can write parameters to the drive from the PLC. If we look in the parameter list, in the chapter for field bus, we will find the setup for all the information sent from the drive to the PLC and also all the information sent from the PLC to the drive, the references. If we look at one of the values selected here, 1125, what information is that representing? Go to the manual, search for the ID number 1125, you will find out it's active current, which are sent from the drive to the PLC. All these ID numbers represent different process values. In opposite direction, we will find that references sent to the drive is these ones. One quite useful um, feature is to be able to write any ID number and any value from the PLC to the drive. In this way, you can change any parameters and how to do that. From the PLC, we get a value here, which we put into this box. So the value that the PLC write here ends up here. So let's say the PLC write the ID number for the base current reference. Then it comes into here 1533, which is the ID number for the base current reference. Okay, anything the PLC then will write into this box will end up in the base current reference on the drive. So in this way, you have a kind of flexible way of writing into any parameter in the drive and all it takes is to allocate the two last boxes, the, the last field bus data in, to this function. Here is seen on the PLC screen the functionality where I can write any value to any ID number. If I select ID number 1533, which is the base current reference, I could write anything here, 50%, which is 5, 0 and 1 decimal. And it will write now 
point zero to the base current reference. And this way I can select whatever ID I want and put any value there. A quite useful functionality is to use the last bits in the control word to change the status of a parameter in the drive, typically starting and stopping stuff like the PID regulator for the voltage. Uh, if we wanted to use bit number 12 in the control word to start and stop the PID regulator, then we find the ID number for the PID regulator. This is 8007. We can then go back to the field bus and we select 1807. That is the ID number that we are going to change. So when we change the bit status on the bit 12, then the PID regulator will be turned on and off. For commissioning purpose, it's useful to take a look what's going on inside a drive. NC Drive, you open the monitoring page and you select to look at the field bus control word, the control word one for the U grid, and also the status word, the information bitwise sent from the drive to the PLC. Also select some process valid, just to make sure you have some live values, and also take a look at what is sent on the field bus to the PLC, then you can compare with the PLC programmer and see the formats and everything. Uh, the field bus process data in, look, you select here the firmware. When looking at control word, it's useful to select binary and up here you can then see the bitwise pattern for the control word. Least significant bit is here to the right and the most significant bit is here to the left. Same is for the status word. Least significant bit is here to the right and most significant to the left. I know that when I start the drive I have to lift this bit from false to true. It will start. And I will see it on the status word that it will be lifted here. So let's try. Here we saw that we gave the command over the PLC field bus and we have a started drive and you're sending back this on the field bus. And this you can compare to what the PLC programmer guy received in his end. So this is a useful way to monitor what's going on on the field bus and compare with the PLC programmer guy. Before we leave the grid converter and move on to other topics, an advice is to bring a small frame 4 frequency converter to your office and train the field bus and the parameter setups in small scale. This frame 4 doesn't need any license number to work with the application, so it is only the hardware you need for it. In this way, you will get familiar with uh, both the field bus, the parameters and everything, and you will save a lot of time in the workshop and the full-scale commissioning. Thank you for watching.